Hello, I'm Bruce Zipoit. Coming up today on News Talk, what the region's business community thinks about Metro's failure to get its act together. Yesterday, we met the people behind the new WMATA Riders Union. Well, what do business owners have to say about the transit agency's safety, reliability, and financial woes? Also, planning for the Pope. Federal workers are being told to stay home during the pontiff's visit to D.C., and we're learning more about the road closures his travels will trigger. Jim Dinegar, head of the Greater Washington Board of Trade, is here. His take on all this straight ahead. Then, how our attitude about driving and cars has changed over time. Why millennials are nothing like their parents when it comes to having their own wheels. Washington Post reporter Mark Fisher with that. From News Channel 8, this is News Talk with Bruce DePoint. It's been a great week of shows, and we are delighted to have you with us on this Friday, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the program. We begin this time with Metro's need for new leadership and the transit agency's struggle to get on top of safety concerns and a financial situation that many have called dire. Yesterday, we met the people behind the new Metro Riders Union, an organization hoping to give commuters and other users of Metro a seat at the table. Today, the business perspective. Jim Dinegar, head of the Greater Washington Board of Trade, back with us. Always good to have you here. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks here. very much for your time. Uh, you're tied into Metro in the sense that the business community and all of us are connected to Metro. We're all dependent on Metro. As you watch them struggle, it's been a year now since Richard Sarles gave notice. He gave notice in September of 2014, actually left in January, and the agency's had interim leadership ever since. You're watching, you're in communication with uh, the leadership there. What's your take? Well, we're watching, but we're also beyond communicating. We're supporting Metro. We're pushing very hard for things to get better, and there are practical issues that need to be addressed. You know, it's really been on the downslide. It used to be a source of pride in the greater Washington region, and it really has been tarnished. Having said that, investments are being made in new cars, not just the Silver Line, but that was a big deal, but the new cars to start to get us more eight-car trains we can move more people. There needs to be more improvements in the lighting of the stations, the stations themselves, more than a test product underway out of Bethesda. We're starting to see real progress that has been years in the making, and, and we're seeing the escalators and elevators at a much, much higher, much better running rate. Having said all that, you need a GM so you've got somebody to pass the ball to that you can count on. Jack's done a very nice job as interim in a hellacious situation. The board has been fractured. They're getting together. They've had their retreat. They've gotten to know each other. They understand each other's workings, abilities together. And so there is a bit more of collegiality, very important. And beyond that, they're going in the, in the closer to same direction. They've got a new search firm. The search is underway. So there's progress. I think we'll start to see real, real results very soon. But we're very impatient. Are they closer to being on the same page? They're much closer to being on the same page. Boy, there were a lot of different pages for a period of time. Do we need a finance expert? Do we need a turnaround specialist? Do we need a general manager? I have to say that was all across the board. I have confidence in the CFO. The audit is done. The, the CFO has been on board about probably less than a year, and he's got a very good team, and they're sharing all of the information. On the turnaround specialist or the safety culture and all the rest, whoever they get in there needs to get tax tackling on that immediately. And then on top of that, th there's also sort of a, more than an image problem, and I don't mean communications. The stations smell, the stations are dirty, the stations don't look good. Let's get a buff and scrub program going to, to put a better look on things so it's more inviting for people to use. I've had people, we've had people on the show describe the agency's transit challenges, and they're sobering. Can you put them in layperson's terms? People don't want to take Metro. They don't feel like they're safe. They don't feel like they're reliable. These are the basic elements of a transportation system. You have to return that safety culture. You've got to get it so people feel comfortable and confident that they will get from where they are to where they're going in a reasonable period of time. Now there are, I'll say, fits and starts, stops and starts now to make sure that we are not going over any track beds that are in problematic condition. But that's an interim situation. I think it's going to get better with improvements. And again, the new car are going to make things better, but for goodness sakes, get the air conditioning figured out. Th these are basic elements, and I think a very strong general manager will make things happen. There are uh, uh, big dollar cash flow issues at the agency, too. Well, the, bo the business community, Board of Trade, the Federal City Council, a number of other business organizations have been square behind Metro's push for additional funding. But 
But then we lost confidence in Metro. And if we lost confidence in Metro, it's very difficult to go to Capitol Hill or to the states and to the district and the federal government and ask for more funds. So I actually would tell you that now is a terrible time to ask for more money, but it's a time when they need more money. That's the balance. Let's get this restored quickly, the right team in place, more of the improvements, and then we will very comfortably go forward to ask for more funds. Phone lines open this Friday as we talk with Jim Denninger. He's head of the Greater Washington Board of Trade, talking mostly today about Metro, but we'll discuss some other topics as well. And we'd love to include you in the discussion today, as always. Our number posted to the bottom of the screen so that you can join in. I hope you will. 703-387-1020 is our number. If you're watching live in the 11 o'clock hour, that's when we can take calls. We hope you will join in. Again, 387-1020, area code 703. That's our number. Grab an open line now, and we'll go to the phones as your questions and comments and suggestions come in. You deal with business leaders at a high level all the time. These are people who um, see problems coming and try to get at them proactively. They have problems that come out of the blue, get dumped in their lap, and they have to deal with those. How have the people that you interact with through the board, through the Board of Trade, the business community, how have they absorbed the report on the uh, derailment downtown where a test machine discovered the problem and the issue that would then cause the derailment and uh, despite that uh, warning, if you will, that, that heads up that something was amiss with the track, the wide gauge issue as it's described in the t technical language of, of, of rail, nothing happened. And a major derailment occurred, which while thankfully didn't cause any injuries, was a major, major headache and hassle for the region. In inexcusable is the only phrase there is on that one. But when you dig deeper, the problem begins to get worse if everybody starts doing the finger pointing and piling on and this and that. There needs to be a culture of safety. And while there have been reports that it, there is a culture of safety, clearly that wasn't the case. Whatever the lines of communications are, those were broken. There needs to be a direct access opportunity from whoever discovers it right to the people who can make stop the presses in the media business well stop the trains in the train business and get this fixed it it really should have been stop everything get this fixed so I, I don't understand how that could be allowed to proceed and you can't rely on technology for everything there are humans that are involved in this and so you have to have that culture the communication and then I will tell you that people do need to be held accountable and it's not just sort of one or two it's right on all the way down through the ranks to make sure that everybody understands what's expected how they're going to be held accountable and then hold them accountable like that's the that's the way business is done and so I will tell you from the business community it shook confidence yet again it's been quiet since we'd like it to remain quiet as we restore more of the escalators the elevators and by extension restore confidence we've got a ways to go if a, if a, if a team is a perennial also ran and they've got a meddling owner or an owner who uh, doesn't have the wherewithal or won't write the check to bring the talent in it might be hard to fill a coaching vacancy with a top caliber leader is that Metro? Well, I think that that's a little bit of a concern associated as you're raising it with the board's involvement. I don't think that that's been the case. What about the case. broader, when you take all of it into consideration? Well, let, let's start with the board a little bit, because I think the board has a fiduciary responsibility, a governance responsibility, and they're very intent on making sure that happens. Uh, they've been, I'll say, mistreated. They weren't shared with all of the information as it relates to the finances. They were surprised and disappointed as derailment as anybody out there, and while they're specifically not responsible for operations they want the stories in the school of no surprises they've been surprised repeatedly and so they're angry they're upset and they're determined to make some changes and they will when you look broadly at the community I have to say Metro is beleaguered I'm not sure how they dig themselves out of this hole it's sort of like well you'll be known as a success if you don't have problems that's not success that's that's just sort of basic operating procedure that we would expect I think they're uh, they're going to have to really quietly boost confidence, get the shine back on it, really get things going so that people are, are relying on Metro again. It is the economic engine of this region, and candidly, it moves a lot of people to work in the morning and back home at night. But if there's a Vince Lombardi out there who can come in and uh, begin to make some progress 
very quickly in, a, in, in not one but a handful of different areas, is that person going to be scared off by what they view as the status quo? Oh, well, if you're going to get scared off, then don't apply for the job. This isn't for the meek. This is going to take a backbone. It's going to take some real, uh, real strength. Having said that, it's not a one-person operation. Whoever the GM is that comes in needs to assemble a team, an expert on safety, a confidence in the CFO, somebody very good as it relates to the operations of rail. It doesn't need to be Superman or Superwoman, mm -hmm. but it needs to be somebody who's run complex situations in the past successfully, and I believe the very good people are out there. Talking with Jim Denninger, head of the Greater Washington Board of Trade. We'll take a quick break here. We're back, though, with more right after this.